Hey, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Hello Hot Flash. All right. When you hear the next voice, it's not going to be a female voice. Wake up, folks. I have I'm one of our first gentlemen on the podcast. And it's because what he is doing is so magical. And you may actually kind of heard about him or heard him and not even realized it before. And I once I found out that I could get connected to um to our guest Barry today, I got super, super excited and wanted to bring him on. So Barry, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be sharing with you and your audience. Yeah, this is going to be great. So I'm going to give a little more formal introduction of you and then we'll get started. All right. So again, our guest today is, um, what does Les Paul, Shirley McLean, Dr. Daniel Amon, and Joe Dispenza have in common? Music produced by our guest, Barry Goldstein. His Grammy Award-winning productions and innovative product development have charted on Billboard, been featured in film, TV, and on number one PBS specials. His book, The Secret Language of the Heart, provides groundbreaking research, experimental processes, and musical programs for transforming your life. Barry, once again, thank you so much for being a guest. You're welcome. Yeah. Tell us, how did you get started in music? Well, there was always music in my household. And uh, from an early age, I was fascinated by music. I, I literally remember my mom taking my fingers on a piano. <laughs> and she played Yellow Bird by Harry Belafonte. And I remember how the notes, I was, I was more focused on how the notes were hanging in the air after they were played. Mm-hmm. So the, the space between the notes, which is interesting because it later became a predominant part of my style in terms of the music that I'm doing today. Um, but initially I was a producer in New York City and did a lot of hip hop and club music and rock music. And, you know, I, I began to get burnt out on music as a, a job. And so that led me to seeking tools to manage my own stress and my own anxiety. And I literally became my own experiment and just started taking these hour long journeys where I would let the music come through me as opposed to composing the music, I was allowing myself to reach more meditative states by targeting my own heart at a relaxed state, which the research behind that shows most of us, um, our hearts at a relaxed state are between 60 to 70 beats per minute. So I set my metronome for 60 beats per minute and started taking these hour long journeys and my own stress, my own anxieties were drastically diminished and I was getting better sleep and I started sharing them with everyone I knew. And before you know it, it created a ripple effect of people using this music in uh, much different ways than for entertainment, you know, for um, for sleeping challenges, for anxiety, for working with um, dementia and agitated behaviors in Alzheimer's patients, for with cancer patients um, in hospice, um, for transitioning life and also in birthing children into the world, utilizing the music. So um, it was a big surprise to me as well. I never thought. You know, 30 years ago, my music would be putting people to sleep at night. <laughs> I probably would have considered that an insult, but now know, it's, right? it's one of the biggest compliments, right? Because over 75 million people in our country experience some type of sleeping challenge or insomnia. So <laughs> from hip hop to sleep music. <laughs> That's it. Exactly. It's a couple of different lifetimes worth of music in my one life. Yeah. And I've been very, very blessed. So. That's so amazing. We've had guests talk about sleep issues and stress and anxiety. And what I always love is the the idea around there are ways to heal your body that does not always require medication. And music is such a powerful source of healing. I've used it on my own, not just necessarily meditative, but you know, you can be in a mood and turn on the loudest music ever. And it just, it lifts your mood or you can put on something calming and it calms your mood. So it, there's power in what you do. We appreciate that. 
Absolutely. Yeah. And it's all about targeting those specific states. So most of us have experienced powerful situations uh, with music, but most of the time they're random. They're happening to us. Mm -hmm. But when we can set intention and we can navigate literally music as a tool to move our energy in different places, we become the DJs of our own lives. So we start programming our own lives as opposed to it happening to us. It's not just something that happens to us. Music something that happens in us as well. And when we can find the right music to resonate with what I call your inner symphony, um, then we can really amplify you know, our creative processes. We can amplify our um, focus. We can amplify relaxation uh, in our lives. And it's really where you want to go and utilizing music as a bridge to get there. Love that. So you've been coined a um, musicarian. Did I pronounce that correctly? Yeah, I actually made up that name myself. <laughs> and then I found out it didn't here. exist. Like, oh, I like making up names for things. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, ooh, where did, where did this word come from? Tell us about that. Yeah, I mean, for a while, I felt kind of like I was in between. A lot of people were calling um, what I was doing sound healing. But because I have a predominant background in production and composition, I kind of felt my music or what I was what I was doing, I call them acousticeuticals. Mm -hmm. So just like we have pharmaceuticals and nutraceuticals, I call these acousticeuticals. I felt like I was somewhere in between sound healing and the therapeutic aspects of music. And when I'm a Tarian is someone who dedicates their life to something. So a musitarian is someone who dedicates their life to transforming the lives of others using music, sound, and vibration. And that's really what, what I've been doing. And you've been doing an amazing job at it. You talked a little bit about this with us, but when did you decide to focus on music as a way to heal, to heal yourself and to heal others? Yeah, well, that was that was kind of the start of it with, the, you know, myself as the experiment. But it also really required, Stephanie, that I redefined healing, you know, because I was brought up in the in the Bronx in New York City and you know when I told my friends that I was I was doing sound healing like people looked at me like I had four heads <laughs> and what I realized is most of us have been brought up you know thinking that healing is predominantly dedicated to the physical body and I and myself as well so I realized that I had to look at health as a four body system, not just the physical body, but the mental, emotional and spiritual body all encapsulate our health. And if you look at how music can heal, it's not just on the physical level. Most of us have had experiences where we've been able to release grief through hearing a musical song, or we've been inspired by hearing a song that you know moves us, that reminds us of our wedding day or our, our first kiss. So if you think of healing as um, releasing a block of some kind from the, from any one of those mental, physical, emotional, or spiritual, that leaves a space for healing to occur, the potential for healing to occur when we release a block in any of those. So it required that I redefined how I looked at healing. And I think it's much more palatable to people in mainstream, which is what I'm looking for to break through into with what my work is in mainstream, not just, you know, a certain group or the choir, so to speak, that understand it, but getting to people who don't. And that requires knowing that any of us can have a healing um, through utilizing music, sound and vibration in the, in the right way. And I always include sound and vibration mm -hmm. because music is um, and, and sound and vibration are, are not always the same thing. Music contains all of them. But sound and vibration aren't always musical. You know, if I hit a crystal bowl or a tuning fork, you know, that's sound and vibration, but it's not necessarily musical in the fact that it contains a distinct melody or a repetitive phrase or a relationship to other notes. So um, all of those are, are uh, possible that we shift into healing with music, sound and vibration, but they don't always include each other. Smart. I like that. There's a connection between the brain and heart. So how does music help us make that connection? 
Yeah, so there's some great studies now that are um, being done. I don't know if you've ever heard of the HeartMath Association, but the HeartMath Association has doing doing studies that actually measure the um, the B to B changes in our heart, so our heart rate variability. Mm -hmm. And what they've shown is that when we move into elevated mood states such as gratitude, kindness, and compassion, that our heart actually beats in more orderly rhythms. So smoother and orderly rhythms, and this is called heart coherence. And if you think of our bodies as an orchestra and the different parts of our body being the different sections of the orchestra, the heart is really the rhythm section. Mm -hmm. So if every part of your body or every system in your body was playing different music at different timings, what you would hear would be very dissonant. But our heart has the ability to set this rhythm. And when it does, and we're able to move into these smooth and orderly rhythms, the rest of our physical body can move into a more optimal state of health. And that's usually defined by heart rate variability, which is increased when we're in those emotional states. So music's role in that is music has the ability to entrain and synchronize our physical clock right which is our heartbeat with an external source being music so for instance when i was targeting my heart at 60 beats per minute right that's exactly what i was doing and i didn't know it at the time but i was moving my heart to smoother and more coherent rhythms which actually um now the research is showing and this is very new that when our heart moves to these uh, smooth orderly rhythms through music, meditation, mindfulness, that it has an association and a communication with our brain. So when we're in those coherent states, our brain begins to produce more alpha brain waves, which is the state that we normally go into when we are very relaxed, but attentive, um, but also what we call our flow state, which athletes call moving to the zone, or you hear that use a lot in corporation moving into flow state because we could become more productive and also more focused in those states. So by utilizing music and a lot of my music is composed at 60 beats per minute and targeting those smoother, coherent rhythms, it's not just it's not music therapy. It's therapeutic music. The music in itself carries the therapy and you can literally target um, to utilize it in your day to you um, to tap into and start your day with intention you can guide yourself in the middle of your day to use a piece of music as well and obviously for sleep time winding down is crucial as well because most of us are going from our busy beta brainwave states and we're trying to jump into alpha, which is a much a mu delta, which is a much slower brainwave state, which we're, we're, when we're in sleep, we're in delta. So bridging um, your brainwaves from beta, then to alpha, then to theta, then to delta is going to be much more beneficial um, to your sleep state than, for instance, you know, spending an hour on social media before you go to sleep, not winding down, not, you know, not creating some type of ritual to move into sleep with. So maybe before we end, I can even give um, your listeners and your audience like a sample music program that will be very easy to implement at different times of their day so that they can immediately plug this into creating transformation in their lives. I'm excited about that part. I'm going to ask you two more questions before we get to that, though. Um, okay. <laughs> so the majority of my audience, they're either they're perimenopausal, postmenopausal, and they are their hormones are fluctuating. Again, you talked about sleep. You know, we're waking up at three o'clock in the morning. This sounds like it is a tool that we could use as we're transitioning from that perimenopausal to menopausal to postmenopausal state to help calm the nervous system, to help our heart beat at a, a more normal pace and to sleep better at night. Is that is that what you're saying with this? Yes, absolutely. And, you know, ultimately we're targeting, especially when we're in, we're talking about those things, we're really targeting being able to move to the parasympathetic state. Mm 
Mm -hmm. right and that's when our body can rest and digest more efficiently it can detox more efficiently it can adjust our circadian rhythms in that state as well so, so when we're utilizing music to move to a more relaxed state we are moving into that parasympathetic state and this is perfect when those things happen in your day and your mood is shifting and your hormones are shifting to be able to have some tools to utilize that are simple but powerful even just placing your hands on your heart during your day and when you feel like you're in overwhelm mode or there are challenges that are going on in your day and you close your eyes and you place your hands on your heart you bring an awareness to your own unique sound within you i call this your inner symphony your heartbeat and your breath and no matter what's going on in your life and if you feel comfortable just place your hands on your heart with me and if you just go inward and allow yourself to just feel your heartbeat and listen to your breath going in and out and breathe it in through your heart and out through your heart let's do that one more time a big breath in through the heart and a big breath out. And we bring an awareness in that no matter what's going on in your life, whatever challenges you're experiencing, that in this moment, you have your heartbeat, you have your breath. This is your home base. You can always come back to this essence of you, regardless of what's going on in the energy in your day. And it's almost like coming home mm -hmm. um, to a part of yourself that's always there. And although you and I, we both have a heartbeat, we both have our breath. There are no two heartbeats, no two breaths that are exactly your alike. So this is coming home to your own uniqueness. And it's important that we tap into that and we bring gratitude into our day just for the sim simpler things mm -hmm. in life. And so that's just by bringing your awareness a couple of times in your day and doing this really, simple but powerful breathing process i call it the sacred heart breathing process and if you want to amplify that you can envision someone that you love or something that you love um, while you're doing that or your favorite place in nature as you're breathing in and out of your heart and just it allows you to shift your environment no matter what's going on outside of you you have the ability to reclaim what's going on inside of you and i call this your inner symphony and when you can appreciate that at a very subtle level then when you listen to music you know traditional music that we listen to all the time it's amplified because you've learned to listen in a very very inward way and it, this also is a great way to create inner peace and a lot going on when we do this in the brain as well so it's a great way to just move out of mind chatter and back into you that was a powerful exercise and what you said you should be thinking about something and i actually was so when i leave this interview i'm going to go to my grandson's house and see him so i was actually like thinking about that and what that actually feels like and it felt like my whole body shifted just by doing that what could be considered a simple exercise so it there's power in what you're saying the exercise and there's power in the healing of music and that let's get to that now i want you to do sure. some things for us and walk us through i know that you have some of your work in cancer centers and different medical practices walk us through that maybe that composition process or or that thought process behind it as you're playing the music for us yeah so for me i mean the compositional process for me is always about becoming the energy of what I'm creating. So mm -hmm. if I'm creating something that I want to be a very loving or compassionate piece, then I myself have to be in that space. It's almost like a recipe when you're cooking, you know, why do grandma's meatballs taste so great um, <laughs> when, when you eat them? And it's because she's already envisioning her family eating them at dinner. She, she's in that space of becoming the love right, that she's putting into that recipe. So that's part of my recipe, is putting myself in that loving, kind state while I'm composing. And I believe that the music's a carrier of intention and frequency and all of that. So one of my largest intentions is that it serve the highest capacity of healing for each individual that listens to it. 
And, you know, initially, Stephanie, I didn't start composing and saying, okay, this one's going to be for sleep. This one's going to be used in cancer centers. This one's going to be used to birth children into the world. People started letting me know how they were using it. So, you know, the research is showing this as well, that when people are going through chemo treatments, that um, music and relaxing music can help combat the nausea and actually lessen the effects of nausea um, while they are listening to relaxing music. So even before these studies were out, I had people telling me that they would listen to my music during chemo treatments, using it for dental as well when we're experiencing a lot of anxiety. So because it's targeting our heart at a relaxed state, and it takes you, there's not a lot of melody going on there. So there's not a lot to distract you. It's very easy to move into that state very quickly. And my music has been measured um, to get you into that alpha brainwave state in as little as four to 10 seconds wow. where you can move into right. that state. Yeah. And so music, you know, as we know, it is just being used in so many different ways now to the research is showing that it could be it's being used for Parkinson's now um, as well to uh, assist in moving them into um, their gait usually um, slows down or it's, it's hard to tap into the rhythm centers because the basal ganglia is affected when you're in Parkinson's. So music is being used to help regain a steady rhythm and to increase the gait in Parkinson's patients. I'm just going to reel off, you know, a bunch of studies for you so that, awesome. that all the, your audience knows that there's a lot of new research that's going into this things that we've known for thousands of years. You know, this is where ancient means modern chanting, um, om, which we, you know, we used to consider to be very woo, right, has been studied and it shows that it's creating limbic deactivation in the brain while chanting that specific syllable, which is the part of the brain that was when it's deactivated, you move to a state of inner peace. When people chanted S, nothing happened in the brain, right. just with OM. The Kirtan Kriya, right, has been studied, which is called the Satanama. And this is a big study that was just done by the Alzheimer's organization that showed that memory was being improved that sleep was being improved that telomere length was even being lengthened which is one of the signs of how we age right. this is from chanting you know so who would have thought that so many beneficial aspects could move into health and as well as music for sleep music um, at 60 beats per minute with low low frequencies long tones not a lot of melody as well has been shown to assist in sleep and also help you stay asleep longer um, using preferred music you know the music that you love can help benefit you for all you ladies out there who are working out and you have a workout that you um, that you do every day picking your own music that motivates you is going to be more beneficial than listening to whatever's at the gym so bring your headsets get your playlist together and you know that's going to help you and and your workout and also in recovery so these are just some of the ways Stephanie my book has like over 50 studies that outline how music can be used to assist in navigating our energy and that's really what we're talking about with your audience right is yeah. navigating energy mm -hmm. like how do you want to spend your day when some of these symptoms hit or some of the things that are going on with your hormones, how do you want to be able to shift that? So you can get back to your own giftedness, whatever it is you want to share in the world. And sometimes it can, it can seem overpowering, but music is just a low cost, non-invasive way to really plug in these tools that you can use for transformation. I love that. And, and so that's one of the questions I normally wrap with, like, what's a, a non-invasive, no cost way we can dot, dot, dot. And you just right. did that for us. Music, uh, music is so powerful. It's been such a huge part of my life, such a huge part of my children's lives. My One of my sons is actually a worship leader and wow. it's just so impacts what we do. I was sick for quite a while. And I will tell you, there were days where I would do nothing but listen to music. 
and I could just feel the energy and get through the day much better. Um, to the chagrin of some people in the office, because on Fridays I'd kind of pump it up a little bit. That's <laughs> church music. They should have been listening anyways. <laughs> well, that's the thing too. And most people think that, you know, music in order to be healing has to be just relaxing music, but that's not the case. You know, and when you let me know when you want me to, to just give you guys that quick program to tap into, but I want to talk about that and how you can steer your day in a very simple way to start your own unique music program. Yeah. And I, so I like what you said. It's different for everyone's because when I was really sick, I, so I listened to contemporary gospel a lot, but when I was really sick, I could only listen to old school moan and groan old backwood church music it felt like that's just where i needed to be so that that power is amazing you can talk about that now or you can do the music now whatever whatever is yeah right i was right. gonna say let's let's end with the music piece oh. right and just yeah. um then we can let people move out of this interview and in, in a more relaxed state into their day if you want to create your own music program I usually compare it to creating any nutritional program. So just like there are three important times of the day to nourish yourself with food. And you know, that's one of the things that I was about what you just said, Stephanie, as well. Just like when you eat food, you know what resonates with you, what creates um, allergic reactions in you, what creates inflammation in you. It's the same thing with music. And so that you were tapping in to what resonated with you at that time and what nourished you from a listening point of view. So music, that's an important point. It creates nourishment for us, just like food does. And whatever we put into our system with music is going to amplify, you know, what we're, what we're looking to take it to. So in the morning, I like to target a state of gratitude. So start your day in the morning, just like you have breakfast, which breaks the fast of what you're eating. What music to start your day do you want to break the fast of you not listening to anything, you know, for eight hours? Right. So creating a gratitude playlist. And I say, keep it simple, just three songs. Mm. And as we just said, it doesn't have to be all relaxing. So for me, part of my gratitude playlist is Sly and the Family Stone. Thank you for letting me be myself. Right? <laughs> I won't sing I love that, that song. <laughs> it just gets me up, right? Old school, funky um, yes. R&B. Yes. Louis Armstrong, What a Wonderful Life, oh. because it just taps me into not taking anything for granted. Right. And then I have a piece of music that I've composed called The Heart Codes mm -hmm. that is more relaxing and takes me into my heart and just brings that all home into a place of gratitude. And then I set my intention. What's my intention for the day after I tap into gratitude? Mm -hmm. So that's in the morning. Yes. So in the afternoon, there's two different tools that you can utilize. One of them I call the five minute musical vacation. Okay. And that is basically listening to a piece of music from another part of the world that you've never heard before. Oh. I like yeah. That. Yeah. So like if you're in your environment a lot, like I am, like I'm in this creative space a lot. I love it. Right. But also I want to kind of shift out of this environment to clear my mind uh -huh. and to kind of reamplify my creative process as well. And so I listen to a song like from Jamaica or um, from Spain or listen to salsa music or I listen to music from the Orient. I close my eyes. I make it a multi-sensory experience where I'm smelling what's going on in the environment my, by the ocean. What do the foods taste like, right? What do um, the textures feel like of the clothing or the, or the sand on the beach? And by taking myself into this multi-sensory experience, it really does create a five-minute vacation where when I come back, I wasn't in this room for those five minutes. Yeah. I was in the Orient or I was in Jamaica or wherever it may be. And so that's very powerful. And you can, you know, you can go to YouTube and just type in different, it's, you know, music's so accessible to us now. Just type in a, a part of the world you've never been to and type in music behind that, right? Music, Iceland, and see what it sounds like. Allow yourself to take a journey. I will 
have never thought of that. That is so good. <laughs> that is yeah, so and cool. it, it really works. Yeah. And another quick one as well, that's huh? great to plug into your day, is put on your happy song. Mm. So your happy song is one song that makes you feel like you're in a state of happiness. And if I ask you, like, Stephanie, right now, what's your happy song? What's one song that when you listen to it, it makes you happy? I knew you were going to say that, and I can't even think of anything. And so honestly, almost anything Michael Jackson. <laughs> there you go. So that's one of mine. Yeah. Yeah. So The Love You Save by the Jackson 5 is like, is All one right. of my big happy songs. Yeah. I'm like doing the dance to it right now. <laughs> See, that's the whole thing. And that's what the research shows, that even thinking about that song. Yeah right, starts to put you into a, a, a better mood state. And actually, the parts of the brain that are uh, linked to our reward system and create dopamine for us, mm -hmm. right, are activated when we're tapping into music that we love. Yeah. So we have these autobiographical memories around it that as soon as we hear the title of it, we tap into it. So plug in your happy song and get up and move. If it's a song that is... Um, you know, that makes you dance, like, you know, the love you save or right. Michael Jackson stuff, get up and move because the studies show that it can improve your cognition and your focus as well by listening to music that makes you dance or getting up. Yeah, I like that. So, and then uh, before you go to sleep, I'm sorry, go ahead. I, I just said that gave me a, a whole new set of like new energy, just thinking about the song. I can't imagine if I like made that part of my routine every day. So, yeah. And that's it. And that's a five minute, something you can do in five minutes, either the, the five minute musical vacation or one song mm -hmm. during your lunch break, just like lunch revitalizes and re-energizes your system. When you bring food in, you're right. looking to nurture yourself, right. And, and bring that nourishment in. But a lot of times we lose our, our energy in the middle of our day by challenging situations that occur. And we need to reset, renew and rejuvenate through music to just tap us back into that and really easy to plug in the mind can't say no to five minutes everybody has five minutes yeah. so and then at night if you think of your evening for the music um it's similar to dessert mm -hmm. you know dessert is something sweet right that's going to be um going to allow us to feel like we've taken care of ourselves in some way um, to bring some sweetness into our lives. So a piece of gentle music about an hour before bedtime. And I recommend music at 60 beats per minute. Um, any of my music, I have a series called Ambiology um, that is great for that. And I have a piece of music called Ambiology 6 Genesis is a great piece of music. It's been um, use in clinics to improve uh, insomnia as well. And about an hour before bedtime, just gently put it on in the background. Mm. You don't have to intently listen to it like you do, you know, traditional music. It's kind of like lighting a candle in a room. You know it's there, but you don't have to stare at the candle's flame to get the benefits. You just know that it's shifted your environment. And so you just play the music gently. And you'll find that your breath starts to slow down and adapt to that 60 beats per minute. And most of us who have sleeping challenges, it's happened over a long period of time. So this acts as a reprogramming. And if you do this for about 30 days, where you just are putting that music on about an hour before sleep, allowing yourself to wind down, and you're going to notice a shift where you start almost wanting to hear that music you you start to associate that music with a more sacred time of your evening where you're able to wind down and so those are the three times of the day morning afternoon and evening just three quick ways to start your own music program and literally will change your life do it for 30 days and i guarantee it will change your life yeah i i'm, I'm always my mind is already racing i'm like oh when can i take the time to set this up. And I already have a playlist and I need to change this. And blah, blah. So <laughs> I'm thinking about this because again, I know the power of music. It just like you said, it changes the complete atmosphere. So my, my youngest son is still at home and every once in a while, he's the, the one that plays, well, they all play, but he's the one that plays in public, I should say. And every once in a while, he'll like, all right, he'll turn on the loudest music, country, rock, all different genres. 
And it, no matter what mood I'm in, it changes the environment. We have a dance party in the house and, and so forth. So there, there is definitely power behind music. That's awesome. And it's great to make it a family thing, you know, yeah. because it's important to like listen and to acknowledge the music that our kids are listening to as well, because that's another way to communicate what's going on with them because music's so important to them that it's symbolic sometimes of what's going on in their lives. So if, you, if they're listening to music that you don't like, you know, I invite you to just listen beyond, you know, your preferences and create conversation with it. Ask them, so what is it that you like about this music? Yeah. And it might be, oh, I love this lyric. And that might really create some great insights when you listen to the message or the lyrics in it of something that they may be experiencing that you didn't know or that this is a way that they can communicate you can get to know them on a deeper level because our music is our deep you know uh, it's our deep vibration of what resonates with us when something resonates with us it amplifies something that's already there yeah. So their music is amplifying something in them when they're listening to it. Yeah, I love that. I like. I love that you brought that perspective up as well. This has been amazing. I'm su I'm super excited now. <laughs> I love it. I'm excited too. It's great, <laughs> great talking Tell with that, you. Well, I know that you're going to. Um, we're going to end the podcast the this episode with you playing for us. So before we get to that. Tell folks how they can find you, and I will also make sure that everything is in the show notes as well. Yeah, so the best way to find me is barrygoldsteinmusic.com. In addition, um, you can find me on most of the platforms. You can find my music on iTunes, on Amazon, on Spotify, as well as a site that I have called The Sound of Transformation. And that has a lot of my courses. So if this kind of piqued your interest a little bit and you'd like to delve deeper into it, you know, I have full blown courses that can teach you how to delve into it on a much deeper level with the science. Um, also where ancient and modern kind of meet together. So providing the science, but experiential processes as well. So you can really, really delve deeper into it. And that's really uh, it. My book is also called The Secret Language of the Heart. You mentioned that's on Amazon and I have a YouTube channel. So there's a lot of free content on there that you can find. And I'm also always doing Facebook lives and YouTube lives. So the best thing to do is sign up for my email list because when you do, you get three free pieces of music right away. Um, so that will kind of get you into my world and what I call my sound tribe. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I hope to, to see and hear from, from more of you. I'm very, thank you so much. And we appreciate the fact that you are going to, uh, to, to play for us. So thank you. Yeah, so I'm just gonna, um, just gonna let a piece of music come through and take time for yourself um, and to honor yourself. Thank yourself for being here and for spending the time with Stephanie and I, and thank you so much for having me and the amazing work that you're sharing in your world as well and your community. And so with, when you're listening to this, I suggest going inward, closing your eyes and creating an intention for yourself. Where would you like to see yourself on the other side of this music? Would you like to see yourself more relaxed or calmer and set an intention for the rest of your day, regardless of when you're listening to this, of something that you would like to see occur um, in your life. And that's really all you have to do um, don't get too much in your head about it. Just allow yourself to ride the wave of the music because that's what I'm going to be doing. I have no idea what I'm going to be playing. So I'm diving into the creative fire here and just join me. And thank you so much, all of you, for, for being here today. So you'll see me shift into another camera here. You might hear silence for a second or two until I just get my sound here. And um, you might want to just close your eyes and start breathing a little slower in through your heart and out through your heart. Mm -hmm. And again, many blessings to all of you yes. in your life.
Thank you. 